Jesus wants to partner with you to release his power, his mercy, his healing, his breakthrough upon people's lives from heaven to earth. And one way this happens is through the prayer of intercession. Hello, Frankie, and welcome to my channel, where I want to assist men to live the gospel. Now, if that's some content you want in your life, make sure you subscribe. So before we jump right into the prayer of intercession, it's good to make a distinction between the prayer petition and the prayer of intercession. So when I say prayer petition, what's going on is we are asking God in the name of Jesus for help in some particular way for ourselves. Now, with intercession, we are asking God in the name of Jesus for help in some particular way on behalf of someone else. To intercede is to stand between God and the person or situation and beseech his action in some unique way on behalf of that person. Now, the person may be praying for this or not. They may know God or they may not know him. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter because you're partnering with Jesus that he may act in some way in their lives. Now, we see this all the time in scripture. In one instance, in Mark chapter one, you have Jesus, James, John, and Peter. They go from the synagogue. They're heading to Peter's mother-in-law's house. Now, Peter's mother-in-law, she lay sick with a fever. Now, she does not go and ask Jesus for healing help at all. Actually, it's the apostles that go to Jesus and they make him aware. Hey, Jesus, Peter's mother-in-law is sick. Uh, can you do something about that? Could you heal her? And so they stand in between Jesus and Peter's mother-in-law and they beseech his healing. And what does he do? He goes, grabs her by the hand and heals her. So I've had people come up to me and say, God already knows what people need. So why should I pray? I mean, do my prayers actually make a difference? Can God just sovereignly heal somebody or do something in their lives without us? Well, yeah, he's God, of course he can, but he's chosen to invite us into this type of relationship where we can beseech him and move and affect his heart on behalf of somebody else. And if you don't think that's possible or don't think that the prayer of intercession is powerful, let me share with you some situations in scripture. So in Exodus 17, we have Israel at war with the Amalekites. Now, while Israel's fighting, you have their leader, Moses, who's up in a hill and he begins to intercede with arms raised to God, beseeching his favor upon Israel during the war. And it says that as his arms were outstretched and raised intercession, that Israel was winning the war. But the moment his hands began to drop and intercession ceased, they began losing the battle. It also says that as Moses became tired, there were two people that literally kept his arms raised, even put a rock underneath so he could sit and keep interceding. And what happens? Israel wins the war. Another situation is in the book of Acts where you have Peter and John in the name of Jesus heal this paralytic. Now, the religious leaders are not happy. They begin to persecute and sooner or later throw them both in prison. The people of God begin to intercede on their behalf beseech God that heaven's power would come down and rescue them. And from this prayer of intercession, in the middle of the night, an angel shows up and frees both Peter and John. Now in Acts chapter 12, something interesting happens because James gets arrested by Herod, but there were no intercession. There was no prayer vigils. There was no beseeching God on his behalf to save him. I mean, maybe they got complacent, but unfortunately, James was killed. He was beheaded. And I'm sure the early church never forgot that. They never made that mistake again. And we actually see that because after this, Peter gets arrested by Herod. It says in scripture that fervent prayer was offered up to God without ceasing on his behalf, on the behalf of Peter. And then what happens? An angel, once again, comes in at night, the chains fall off, doors just open, and he's led out without anyone seeing. God wants to partner with us. He wants us to be men of intercession, men who do not doubt the power that we have in Jesus. It says in James 5 that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful. 
It says also in Romans 8 that right now, Jesus is standing before the Father and he's interceding on our behalf. Like right now, Jesus is praying to the Father for you, for me, and he's inviting us to partner in this work of intercession to release heaven's power, mercy, breakthrough, healing, so that his kingdom can advance and people can know him and experience his saving love in their lives. And so who are you going to intercede for? Who's that person or situation that's on your heart that you're gonna partner with Jesus and heaven on their behalf? And so I encourage you, take five minutes a day and you wanna to begin to think of the love that Jesus has for that person. Then you begin to think of the love that you have for them as well. And that's the place that you pray from. And not just you, but maybe your family, maybe your friends, maybe your church community gets together and intercedes on behalf of this one intention. You ask in the name of Jesus that his presence be released upon that situation or this particular person in the unique way that they so need. And that's it. And from there, just watch and trust. Awesome guys, so good to be with you. Listen, if you've enjoyed this content, make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to this channel. God bless you guys.